from which I have not profited, I dare say. I've always thought of Christmas as a good time. A kindly, forgiving, charitable time. A time when men and women seem by one consent to open up their shut-up hearts freely. And to think of people below them as if they really were fellow passengers to the grave, and not just another race of creatures bound on other journeys. And so, Uncle, although it never has put a scrap of gold or silver into my pocket, I do believe it has done me good, and I say God bless it! 
be friends. You are wasting my time. Very well, Uncle. But I shall keep my good humor and wish you a Merry Christmas anyway. And please give my best to that fine family of yours, Lord Cratchit. Thank you, sir. I shall, sir. And a Happy New Year to you both. <laughs> <coughs> Idiot. <coughs> it's really sick, sir. I have eyes, Mr. Cratchit. You'll want the whole day off tomorrow, I suppose. Well, if quite convenient, sir. It is not convenient and it is not fair. If I were to stop half a crown from your wages, you'd think yourself ill-used, I'll be bound. But you don't think me ill-used when I pay a day's wages for no work. Christmas comes but once a year, sir. A poor excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. Holidays are due to once a year events. Leave behind your work but not your pay. Come on, stay free, taboo. Thrift is an offense. Trust is said to ring in at the sleigh. Come on, hurry home to wipe with children. Toy for us and see the gaily caroling before the fire. Screaming, teaming, crowing, growing. Finally, they creep. Of war. 
war. We choose this time of year because it is a time of all others when want is keenly felt and abundance rejoices. Rejoices! <laughs> what shall I put you down for, sir? Down for? Nothing. <laughs> To remain anonymous. And I wish to be left alone since you ask what I wish, gentlemen. That is my answer. I don't make myself merry at Christmas, and I can't afford to make idle people merry. I help to support the establishments I have mentioned. They cost enough, and those who are badly off must go there. <coughs> Many would rather die than go there. Well, if they had rather die, they had better do it and decrease their surplus population. Oh, surely you don't mean that, sir. <laughs> With all my heart. Do you think I don't know these poor of whom you speak? Orphans of the storm, eyes as big as blows, none of whom may see another thing. Thank you. 
do is you can't tell what you eat But put away the follies and the frocks Like like the fancy dad in a box I'm content to start with just a shilling in my pocket A little extra gold or silver filling in my pocket Anybody can drop a shilling in my pocket No I'll take the socks. Bit of bad beef, a block of mustard, and unlucky potato. 
There is more of grey me than the grave about you. Humbug, I tell you. Humbug. within him should walk among his fellow man and travel far and wide. If that spirit goes not forth in life, then it is doomed to do so after death. My spirit never walked beyond our counting house. In life, my spirit never wandered beyond the narrow limits of our money-changing Oh, you were always a good man of business, Jacob. Business? Mankind was my business. Mercy, charity, benevolence, all my business. The dealings of my trade were but a drop of water in the comprehensive ocean of my business. <gasps> you are chained. Jacob, tell me why. I wear the chains I forged in life. Ah. Is its patent strange to you? Every time I cast a beggar and thought to aid him, I let it go. I forged a link.
and as part of my penance, I've been sent to warn you and to offer you a chance in the hope of avoiding my fate. You will be haunted by three spirits. Spirits? Well, I think I'd rather not take them. Expect the first when the bell tolls one. Oh, now, couldn't they all come at once and have it over, David? Expect the second at the stroke of two. The third, more mercurial, will appear in his own good time. Look to see me no more. And look that for your own sake. You remember what has passed between us. Cheer when 
when I make a mistake, when I'm home. No burly pulley will fight me for each piece of cake. My room has been so lonely, a dark and silent den. But at home the whistling song will be loud. We shall have laughter enough for a crowd. Lost. 
fault. What's the matter? Nothing. I should like to say a word or two to my class, Bob Pratt it just now. That's all. Come. My time grows short. Let us see another Christmas Eve, delayed by the pressure of business. Well, I'm sorry I'm late. I did not think you would come at all. Why, what do you mean? It matters little. To you, very little. A golden idol has replaced me. And if it can comfort you in the time to come, as I would have tried to do, then I have no just cause to grieve. This is the even-handed dealing of the world. There is nothing on which it is so hard as poverty, <coughs> and nothing it professes to condemn with such severity as the pursuit of wealth. You fear the world too much, Ebenezer. All your other hopes have merged into the hope of being beyond its sordid reproach. I have seen your nobler aspirations fall off one by one until the master passion gain engrosses you. Have I not? Even I am so much the wiser. What then? I have not changed toward you, have I? Our contract is an old one, made when we were both poor and content to be so. If this had never been between us, tell me, would you seek me out and try to win me now, a dowerless girl? You think not. I would gladly think otherwise if I could. But I cannot. And so I release you, with a full heart, for the love of him you once were. Say something! You may have pain in this for a little while, but it will pass. You will dismiss the recollection gladly as an unprofitable dream from which it happened well that you awoke. And you, Belle? It will pass for me too.
You have never seen my like before, eh? That's true, I have not. You have never walked forth with any of my other brothers? I'm afraid not. Have you many brothers, spirit? Over 1,800! Tremendous family to provide for. I am the spirit of Christmas present. What in the doublet? Something delicious! Will you join me in a toast? Cool! Never touch the stuff! I think you'll make an exception for me! together, 
and to share in your goodness on this special day. Amen. 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 Did you say something? No. no. Oh, I thought I heard you I say said it. nothing. <laughs> oh. Now let us begin, and Merry Christmas to us all. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. And God bless us, everyone. Tell me, Spirit, will he live? I see a vacant place at this table, and a crutch without an owner carefully preserved. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, the child will die. No, say he will be spared. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, none of my brothers will find him here. And if he is going to die, he had better do it and decrease the surplus population. Oh, you use my own words against me. Perhaps in the future you will hold your tongue until you have discovered what the surplus population is and where it may be found. It may be that in the sight of heaven you are more worthless and less fit to live than millions like this poor man's child. Oh. A triumph, my dear, a triumph. Thank you. Now, I would like to propose a toast. Oh, all right. To Mr. Ebenezer Scrooge, the founder of the feast. The founder of the feast, indeed. I wish he were here. I'd give him a piece of my mind to feast upon. My dear, the children. And it is Christmas Day. It should be Christmas Day, when one would drink the health of such a stingy, hard, unfeeling, odious man as Mr. Ebenezer Scrooge. My dear, have some charity. It's not Mr. Scrooge's charity, but your labor that puts food on our table. And who knows how much better off we could be if Mr. Scrooge <laughs> had an ounce of pity in him. You know the truth of it. Yes, well, sometimes I do, perhaps. But not here, not now. No one can touch us with anger or envy or spite when we're home. You are my queen and our court is a dazzling sight. Outside the wind is howling, the sky is iron gray. But at home it's bright as a Turkish bazaar. We let the grouches be grouchy afar. They don't know how lucky we are to be home. home.
comfortable with it. I don't squander it if that's what you mean by making myself comfortable. You mustn't argue with those we visit. It's useless and even tactless. Tact is a quality I despise. <laughs> that I can see. I have no patience with it. Well, I do, and I feel sorry for him. Sorry? <coughs> Me? Who suffers most from his ill whims? Himself, always. Oh, here. He takes it into his heart to dislike us and not come and dine with us. And he misses a very good dinner indeed. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> the reason I go on about my uncle, so is, is that my mother, God bless her saintly soul, was very fond of him. She loved him. That's true. Fan loved me and I her. Dear Fan, if only she were alive today. Fred looks very like her. Yes, I've been reminded of that just recently. I was only going to say that the consequences of his taking a dislike to us and not making merry with us 
is that he misses out on some very pleasant moments which could do him no harm. And I plan to give him the same chance every year whether he likes it or not. Mm, and every year he'll say Christmas? Bah, oh, oh, no, I, I can't let myself think. Hush now, everyone. We'll have a game. Let's play similes. I think of a phrase, give you the first word, and you have five seconds to come up with the simile. Similes? I love that game. I was very good. If you fail to give an acceptable answer, within five seconds you must leave the circle. Last person in the circle wins. Fred, now, don't, don't go on, sir. Just begin. So I shall. <laughs> All right, Margaret, you first. Proud as. One, two, three. Right. Winston, plump as. My wife. Oh, what sort of an answer is that? Sorry, a partridge. Right. Dry as. No, I was thinking of something else. Shall we pour ourselves a drink? No! Play another round! Let's have another set. All right. <laughs> Let me think. Fit and a middle. Fit and a ring. No. Winston. One, two. I a rail. Four. A rail. Rail or a fit. I was thinking thin as a rail. Can't anyone fit this game but me, Janet? Scraps, 
There are institutions. <coughs> Have you visited any of them, these institutions you speak of? I'm taxed for them. Isn't that enough? Is it? Come back to the fire. Look at these hands. They're hard hands. They've done hard work. I want to work. I want to have bread for my children. <clears throat> it's not right that there's no work. We're together. That's what matters. <clears throat> I love you, Meg. <clears throat> I love the children. Tomorrow I'll take the children and go to the parish poorhouse. No! No! I'd rather we all drown in the river than go to one of those places and get separated. Until I get work. No. We're a family. We stick together. Come back to the fire. Why do you show me this? What is this? Molly Fortone would visit me. But I am in the presence of the ghost of Christmas yet to come, am I not? <coughs> ghost of the future! I fear you more than any specter I have seen. But as I know your purpose is to do me good, and I hope to be a better man from what I was, I am prepared to bear your company, and I do so with a thankful heart. Lead on, spirit. The night is waning fast, and time is precious to me, I know. Lead on, spirit. <coughs> <coughs> Go. 
What a splendid winter sky <laughs> With the cloud the shape of a robin's wing And the air so clear you can hear it ring What a splendid winter sky What a joyous Christmas Eve! With the families visiting here and yon, and the little children toddling on to a land of make believe. I can't recall a day I felt for these are beautiful. I can't recall a moment freer. Care it must be the end. What a joyous Christmas Eve! Hard to have a conversation. 
salvation, please. Suffer the little children to come unto me and spare them not, for such is the kingdom of God. I say unto you, he who does not accept the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. Oh, oh this color, it hurts my eyes. It's better now. It makes them red by candlelight. And I won't show red eyes to your father when he comes home for the world. It must be near his time. Past it, brother. But I think he's walked a little slower these last two evenings, mother. I have known him to walk with... I have known him to walk with Tiny Tim upon his shoulder very fast indeed. And so have I, often. He was very light to carry, and his father loved him so that it was no trouble. No trouble. Oh, and there's your father at the door. Hello, my dear. Hello, my dear ones. Hello, father. father. You're late. We were worried about you. The reason I'm late is because I... I went by there today. I couldn't keep away. It's so quiet and green. You shall see it on Sunday. I promised him that on every Sunday... We... My little child, my little, little child, why? Father, please, don't grieve so. I'm sorry. Do you know a blessing to be thankful for? Do you know who I saw in the street today? Mr. Scrooge's nephew, Fred. <laughs> he greeted me in his usual cheerful way, and he saw that I was a little sad. When he asked what was distressing me, I told him. He said he was heartily sorry. I am not the man I was. I am not the man. 
man I must have been! Why do you show me these things if I am past all hope? Oh, tell me that I can yet change these shadows by an altered life! <laughs> Oh. 
gloves on your wrist. <coughs> Merry Christmas, my love. Oh, Fred, I do love you. And not just for this. I know. <laughs> I know. I wonder who that could be. We're not expecting anyone this early, are we? Janet. Janet, Uncle Ebenezer. It's a pleasure. More like a surprise, wouldn't you say? Well, that too, but you see... Well, frankly, it is a surprise. When we spoke yesterday, you made it perfectly clear, uh, it seemed to me anyway, that you had no intention of accepting my annual invitation. I made a lot of things clear, didn't I, Fred? Christmas was a humbug, a waste of time and money, a false and commercial festival and a public to be ignored. Well, basically, that was it, yes. <laughs> and I've come for three reasons. The first is to beg your pardon for the things I said about Christmas. That was a humbug, Fred. Was it? Yes, I didn't know it then, but I know it now. Secondly, I've come to meet your wife. Well, here she is. Yes, very beautiful woman she is, too. Thank you. I, I was in love once. Could you believe it? Yes. Yes, I could. But I possessed neither the courage nor the optimism, or perhaps the depth of feeling that you two have. This ring was a token of our love. Your invitation to dine is still in force. I accept. Still in force? Oh, Rafa, I was always sure that one You time. were sure, were you? Yes. Well, you were right. <laughs> I'd love to dine with you and your friend. I, you'll forgive me for saying so. But I see the shadow of my sister in your face. I loved your mother, Fred. Very much. I've forgotten how much. Perhaps I chose to forget. Well, if it's not too much trouble, I should like to sample some of that punch you're so famous for. <laughs> You've made us both very happy. Oh, oh dear, I'm nearly forgotten. I have another call to make, and it is most urgent. I would be honored if you would accompany me. We would be honored. Thank you. 